the electrification sliders within En-ROADS. What we mean when we talk about electrification or we say electrification is really a switch from all the things that are powered by fuels. Think of cars, trucks, buses, but also uh, furnaces and stoves and houses, industrial facilities that uh, use fuels like oil and natural gas to power equipment. And we're switching all of that over so that it's powered by uh, electricity. Now, we'll talk in a minute about where this, this electricity might come from, but that's the general gist of electrification. So when we move the slider, transport electrification, for example, you can see here I'm highly incentivizing it. And notice what happens on the left uh, for global sources of primary energy. I'm gonna replay the change. And I really encourage you to draw your eye here to oil. So because so much of our transport infrastructure are all the things that we use to get around are powered by oil because it's portable, um, and that kind of thing, that when we electrify it, we really reduce the amount of energy demand for oil. We can, do, we can look at this um, by going under oil primary energy demand and that you see that with this electrification policy, the amount of oil that we need in this new scenario comes down substantially. But let's also look at some of the other fuels more um, uh, and other sources of energy more closely. So in particular, I'm gonna switch over here and look at coal. So what's going on with coal? We actually see an increase in the amount of coal being burned with this scenario. One of the things that's happening is that because we're using less oil, we have to have some other source of energy. And this, and in an electrification scenario, it has to be a source of um, electric generation. And coal in a scenario where we haven't taken any other action is one of those sources. Uh, renewable energy also, we see a boost from that as well. You can see renewable energy also increasing with just transport electrification. So one of the things to keep in mind with electrification is that it works really well with complementary policies, particularly to see the maximum amount of temperature reduction from this. So if we had a policy, say, to tax coal or to um, phase out new coal infrastructure, you would really see that temperature benefit um, go up even more when you do that transport electrification or the buildings and industry electrification. So keep that in mind of how the fuel mix changes and where the electricity is coming from uh, within your scenario. Here are the two views to look at. In the top left, and I'll focus here on transport, final energy consumption, electric share of transport sales on the left, and on the right, total transport. And the distinction here is on the left, this is of all the cars and bus, buses and trucks and rail and shipping and uh, airplanes, of all those sales every year, what share of it is electric? On the right is of all that exists in the world, what share of it is electric? And there's a lag between the two because of the capital stock turnover it takes about well, the lifetime of about 15 years. It means that it takes a while for the old stuff to move out and the new stuff to move in. Look at the lag. You can see that the sales hits 10% around 2032, whereas the total share, the total share hits 10% around 2040. So it's about a 10 year lag. Okay, let's go look and see the different policy sliders that you can change. They're in two major groups. First, we'll focus on the things that directly encourage sales of electrified transport. To encourage those sales, we go underneath here, electrified transport, and I'm gonna select on the right, the cost ratio of electric to oil powered transport. That cost is the total cost of ownership of electrified transport. That includes both the purchase price as well as the fuel and operations and maintenance. And here back in 2000, it was about 10% higher. The electric was 10% higher 
than oil powder transport, but coming down over time. I'm going to click on detailed settings and here electric transport subsidy. You can subsidize electric transport. When you do that, look in the bottom right and you'll see that that cost ratio changing and the cost coming down a lot. More gets purchased, the sales goes up and the overall, the share of total transport goes up. That's the first thing you can do is to subsidize the purchase of electrified transport. I'll undo this and then scroll down to the other key ingredient is charging infrastructure. When you change this slider, you're going to build charging infrastructure to meet whatever demand is coming. What percentage do you build? That's the second way. These two work together. In fact, when you move the top slider on the main view, you're changing both. That's how you increase it. I'll undo this and explore the third way that you encourage electrification directly, and that is by making electricity inexpensive. Several things do that, encouraging inexpensive renewable energy, wind and solar means that electricity is a little less expensive, driving more investment in electrified transport. One can also drive more electrification by discouraging its competition, which is fuel-based transport, particularly internal combustion engine cars. So there's another slider that you can now change under electrified transport. You click, use detailed settings and scroll down here where you can set a limit to fuel powered transport sales. When you take it down from 100% down much, much lower, you're gonna say, we're only gonna allow a little bit of fuel powered transport sales. That drives massive investment and sales of electrified transport. One can also do the same with air and water because that first one is just road and rail. For air and water, one can do the same thing and say, ban uh, fuel-based. The other way to encourage electrification by discouraging fuel is to make that fuel expensive. Taxing oil, setting a carbon price, these are all things that will drive more electrification. Buildings and industry electrification. I'll reset going to pull up the sales of buildings and industry equipment, heat pumps, etc. And we have a similar result here where we can encourage sales, subsidize the sales here, but one can also, and if you really want to see large results, limit fuel powered equipment sales that would be things like not allowing natural gas hookups into commerce and into residential and into homes. Those are things that could lead to much greater adoption. I hope that was helpful.